Hey, everybody. Back again. Ten minutes later. Thank you all for being here. I see some of the people who were in the last video here, too. So thank you all. Uh, let's talk about this. A lot of people talk about the Golden Cross for Bitcoin, but I wanted to go deeper into all of history, all of time. So see if it makes sense to maybe think about that as a signal and what happens afterwards, too. So let's just jump in. And this one is called the Golden Cross Trade and see if we can find a pattern, see if it pays off. So, edutainment, you know the drill. I won't waste any more time because I know it's the second one. So I appreciate all your precious time. This is the chart. Last week I did say that the Bitcoin Golden Cross is incoming. I expected it to hit on the 6th, it hit on the 7th. So I was off by a day, but anyway. But the point is big rallies for Bitcoin have all started with a Golden Cross and what will happen next? We shall see. But the, the big three that were confirmed in February 2012, October 2015, May 2020 were on point, presaging at least a year-long bull market that saw prices rally between 100 and sometimes 600%. And on the other hand, some were kind of like fake outs. Some, some people refer to as bull traps. Let's see if we can identify a way of peeling them back too. So first of all, this is the news today. Bitcoin Golden Cross confirmed. What's next for the Bitcoin price? Of course, you can read that article. I won't tell you anything at all. It's fluff. <laughs> so I, this channel is all about numbers. No fluff, just numbers. And uh, let's dig into the history and look. And I hope some of these pictures aren't offensive to the audience. But I put kind of a skull and crossbones of where the death cross happened and the golden cross, because they typically, as you can see, can be quite close to each other with a couple of exceptions. So if this is a log chart as well, going back to 2014. It's easier to visualize the actual crosses using a log chart. It's a daily chart as well. The red line is the 200 day moving average and the green line is the 50 day moving average. And since inception, basically it's all, all the time that really matters, you know, from 2014 onwards, we have had six death crosses and seven golden crosses. And again, the early days, 2009, or 2009, 2010, 2011, it's kind of messy stuff, so we can just ignore that. But this is really when it starts to get adopted and when things happen. But what you see very clearly from this chart is sometimes there are gold crosses that happen together. Uh, and sometimes there are two instances of gold crosses together and two instances of death crosses together. And that's important. I'll tell you why in a minute. So first of all, let's look at the history with some numbers. Again, going to be a lot of numbers here. I pulled all the data, all the prices at those times of the crosses and the delta between the golden cross and the death cross. And remember, this takes into account selling at the death cross, these numbers, these profit numbers. But of course, you wouldn't typically be selling at the death cross normally if you have the right TA, you can sell before that death cross actually hits and your returns would be a lot higher if you took profits at the tops. So and we've been spending a lot of time trying to make sure that we don't miss tops ever again here on this channel because I've been obsessed with the mistakes from missing the tops last time around. Anyway, if you go back to history, you've got July 15th, 2015. Uh, price was at 285 bucks and it went to September 15th. $229. You all know October or August, September typically are bad months in the stock market. If it was correlated, that makes sense. So the price fell 20%. That trade didn't work. Next time around, October 28th, we ran from $305 up to nearly $7,000. <laughs> it was like a massive rampage for three years almost. And the returns were 2,166%. Wow, good times. Then there was a little one, uh, 23rd of April, 2019 to October 26th, 2019. Returns 67%, not bad. Um, actually, it's funny when you consider some of the runs that Meta and Tesla and other names have taken over the past couple of weeks, 67% isn't that exciting anymore. Anyway, February 18th, 2020 to March 25th, 2020. This is kind of an anomaly, minus 34%, because this was driven by C19. So that one you could actually rip out and uh, replace. Then you have uh, May 21st, 2020 to June 19th, 2021. Nice run, 300%. Bingo. They were the good old days. Um, September 15th, 2021. 
and then a downwind of 43k down 5,000 or 10 percent and that's it and we just started our others feb 6 feb 7 depending on what time zone you're in the price was exactly 22,762. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next. Are we going to take another dip of a double skull, which is very rare. Only twice has it happened in the last nearly nine years. So let's look at the returns, a visual of the returns. So here you can see we had three minuscule negative returns and we had one very large one and two Pretty good size returns, 60% and 300%. So uh, visually, it doesn't look that bad, but you can see with diminishing returns, you know, this chart starts at the left hand side, 2021, all the way to 2015. Over time, returns are less. So let's switch gears. Let's analyze the time frame between the actual crosses. So here, what I did was I calculated the number of days between the gold cross and the death cross for all of these different trades. And in 2015, it was 62 days, 2018, 885 days, 2019, 186 days, 2020, 36 days, 2021, 394 days, and 2022, 121 days. So what if you pull out the anomalies, the 36 day C19 situation, that can be ripped out because that that is meaningless. That was, that was a great time to buy, but it's not, part of an actual occurring trend. And then you had the 62 days back in 2015. You know, the market wasn't very mature. It was very subject to manipulation. So what would happen if we ripped those out? Let's have a look. So here, if we did pull out those two anomalies, we'd see the average gain would not be, actually, I forgot to mention the first gain here. The average gain, if you traded from gold cross to death cross, all these times, which includes the seventh entry now, you would have made 448% over the last eight or nine years, which isn't bad. If you rip out the anomalies, that goes up to 628, 629% actually over those four trades. So the question is, where are we now? I don't know, but uh, things are looking pretty bullish, especially when you look at the flow of money, the cohorts that are accumulating, not many people are selling and the supply is getting scarcer and scarcer. And I know I sound like a broken record when I say that, say that but it really is. Let's just look at the on-chain data. So let's look at what things look like. We rip out the anomalies. Here on the left, you got Friday, January 14th, 2022. Tiny, tiny little negative. Then you have the 2021, that 300% bump. The 2019, it was 69%. And of course, 2018, that huge rampage of nearly 700%, so, or sorry, thousands of percent, over 2000% return. So that's kind of what it looks like. So Golden Cross definitely is a very, very bullish sign. And what I've always said about TA as well, sometimes it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. People trade based on it. People FOMO into Bitcoin because it's a gold cross. And we're seeing that driving the price up today a little bit because Bitcoin is at... 23,261, which is not bad. Uh, now, as I wrap that up, hope you got value from this. Uh, just a super quick one. In irony as well, go across gold, the actual physical yellow stuff that if it falls in your foot, it can hurt it. Also triggered a gold cross. Uh, not that I followed gold, but I thought it was interesting because last week we had the S&P 500 triggering a gold cross and now gold hitting a gold cross. So my question is, can gold hit an all-time high or will it continue to be manipulated? Can it get above where it was back in 2020? We don't know. But remember, over the last 11 years, gold has gone nowhere. And if you rip out the loss of purchasing power of US dollar over the last 11 years, it's gone down 40%. So that's gold. So what's in your wallet? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you like the content. I want to break this out as a quick one because I think it's fascinating to look at history and use historical numbers to drive probabilities for potential positions. So thank you all for being here. I'll see you all later. Bye.